after a historic Supreme Court ruling gays and lesbians can marry in all 50 states. The 5-4 ruling written by Justice Anthony Kennedy requires states to marry same-sex couples no matter where they live. In the victory for gay rights advocates, the justices ruled that states cannot deny gay men and lesbians the same marriage rights enjoyed by opposite-sex couples for thousands of years. Hello, I'm Todd Starnes. Same-sex marriage is now legal in all 50 states. That ruling handed down by the Supreme Court in a 5-4 decision. One of the most outspoken opponents of gay marriage is Franklin Graham. And he joins us live now from North Carolina. Franklin, just a few moments ago on your Facebook page, you posted uh, just a brilliant message. And you write this, with all due respect to the court, it did not define marriage and therefore is not entitled to redefine it. Franklin, I want to get your reaction to the ruling today. Well, Todd, I'm, of course, uh, I, I'm disappointed. Uh, I'm disappointed because our, our government is uh, recognizing sin. This court is endorsing sin. And, and that's what uh, homosexuality is. It's, it's a sin against God, just like uh, um, any other sin. But, but for the court to endorse sin, I'm saddened for our country. Uh, and so... Uh, we'll, we'll have to, to go by with what the court says, but as far as for me, uh, I will never uh, recognize it in my heart uh, because God gave marriage between a man and a woman, and, and that's what marriage is. And I don't think the court, since it never defined marriage, it doesn't have the right uh, to redefine it. Uh, God, God gave us marriage, and, and that's just it, that's period, and God does not change his mind. You know, President Obama just a few moments ago tweeted these words, hashtag love wins. Who, in your estimation, is the loser today? Well, uh, I think our country uh, is, is the loser uh, because uh, marriage is, uh, is, uh, is the institution that God has given. And for us now to, to give this to uh, same-sex couples, and, and who's to say that uh, a few years from now that a man cannot marry his daughter? or uh, two men can marry one woman. I mean, where do, where do you draw the line? Uh, and so th this, is, this is new ground that our, our country is beginning to enter on. And I'm, I'm just concerned about where we head. And then also, is there going to be discrimination against uh, uh, churches, against organizations like what I represent, who are going to stand by the biblical definition of marriage? Or will, will we be discriminated against by the government? And Franklin, that does seem to be a valid concern that people have. And we've seen uh, the messages that you've posted on Facebook, and we've seen religious leaders from many denominations say, hey, look, uh, this is going to be open season on Christian business owners, on pastors and churches that may not uh, perform same-sex uh, weddings or ceremonies. Uh, what are your concerns for those, for those Christians, and what is your word of warning to them? Well, you better be ready and you better be prepared uh, because it's coming. I think we will be, uh, there will be persecution uh, of Christians for, for our stand. Because, see, I believe, uh, I believe the Bible. And, uh, God, listen, God, God loves, uh, loves us, no question about it. So when the president says that love wins, yes, uh, God loves us. But, but sin is sin. And God has standards, and when, when we violate those standards, any type of sexual relationship outside of a marriage relationship between a man and a woman is a sin against God. And, but God will forgive sin, but the only way that he'll forgive it is if we repent and confess our sins, and by faith, uh, put our faith and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who took our sins to the cross. He died and shed his blood on the cross for our sins, all of our sins. So if we're willing to confess and repent and believe on the name of Jesus Christ, God will forgive our sins. Uh, but our nation has a spiritual problem. And uh, we, we, need, we, need, uh, we need God's forgiveness. We need re to repent of our sins and turn from our sins. Because I do believe that uh, God's judgment will come on this nation when we read in the scripture. Uh, we see how God judged Israel uh, time and time again when they would turn their back on him and begin to worship other gods, foreign gods, and God would bring judgment on, on Israel. And I believe God could bring judgment on America. And Franklin, real quick, uh, one of your friends, Jack Graham, Prestonwood Baptist Church, and many other religious leaders are saying the same thing. They're saying that Christians should be prepared for civil disobedience. I want to get your thoughts on that. Well, uh, first of all... Um, I'm, I think we have to wait and see what the ruling is and, and how it's going to be interpreted. Uh, if, if pastors are going to be forced 
uh, to provide uh, marriage services for gay couples, uh, I certainly, I'm not going to do it because that, that's, that I would be partaking in a sin against God. So I just can't, I can't, I can't do that. Do I wish ill uh, to gay couples? No, I don't. Uh, but I want them to know the truth, that they are living a sinful life and a sinful relationship, and God is going to judge sin one day. And, uh, and the Bible says that sinners will be separated from him in a place the Bible calls hell. And I want to, I love, I love gay couples enough to warn them that, that God is going to judge one day, and I want them to repent and to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ so that they'll be saved. All right, thank you very much. Franklin Graham from Samaritan's Person, the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, thanks for your time. And now some final thoughts. The Supreme Court's decision means gay rights now trump religious liberty. And if you think the cultural purging of the southern states has been breathtaking, wait until you see what the activists are about to unleash on American Christians. Churches and faith-based organizations should be prepared to be hit with lawsuits and government investigations. Pastors who refuse to perform gay marriages and preach from the Bible should prepare for hate crime charges. All dissent will be silenced. But I believe that an overwhelming number of Christians will defy the law. Governor Mike Huckabee said this just moments ago, I will not acquiesce to an imperial court, and he vows to resist and reject judicial tyranny. In closing, I'm reminded of something the late Charles Colson wrote. If we're not willing to fight this, even to the point of breaking the law or refusing to recognize the law, then we lose everything. Given the choice of obeying God or the government, I believe Christians will obey God 